So we're here today with John Kim, author of The Angry Therapist. And uh, it's kind of a chance for John to introduce himself to uh, our community at Better Listen and Wisdom Feed. So John, who are you? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very uh, loaded question. First, I want to say, Steve, thank you for having me on. Um, it's, a, it's a privilege and an honor, and I appreciate that and wanting to create a dialogue with me. Um, who am I? Holy shit. Oh, am I allowed to cuss? Not so much. Good. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn, so <laughs> anything goes. Um, should I talk about my story? Uh, sure. When, that, you, when you say, who, who am I, uh, that's such a dimensional thing. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, who are you uh, in relation to uh, being a presenter or an author? Let's start with that. Yeah, so I, uh, I went through a divorce about 10 years ago and started a blog called The Angry Therapist. Um, I uh, started all over in my personal life, so I didn't have a lot of friends, didn't have you know, a job, I was trained to become a therapist, and I decided to document my journey. But I decided to pull the curtain back and show people that uh, therapists can also be hurting and you know dealing with their own problems, um, and that kind of uh, it kind of took off. I think people were kind of uh, interested uh, because he was a guy practicing transparency, being vulnerable, um, and I went through my whole rebirth, right? Like Joseph Campbell talks about the hero's journey, um, found fitness, found CrossFit, you know, got some tattoos, bought a motorcycle. You see Steve Queen behind me. Um, kind of went through my whole, you know, slayed my dragons, came back to the village. Through the process, built a um, online movement, a life coaching academy, and then you know my own platform and all of that. So just been producing content and all that. But uh, I also started to get really passionate about men uh, because I crossed the great divide, went from boy to man uh, late. You know, this is mid thirties. Um, now I'm forty five, and I I just think it's a really uh, important conversation to have because I believe we live in a fatherless nation. So um, that's kind of who I am today, you know, carrying this flag um, about being a better man. Uh, not so much my definitions, but uh, challenging other men to redefine themselves. Excellent. I mean, uh, I can pick up on any number of things. Uh, a friend, you know, I think part of becoming a man is being a mentor. Uh, yeah. or having a mentor and being sure, absolutely. and uh, a mentor of mine who passed away a few years ago uh, was good friends with Steve McQueen so oh, are you serious oh, serious. that's awesome and he told he me that his adventure to me I mean I've never met him obviously but um, uh, him and his motorcycles and, and uh, he just always kind of represented adventure like on the back of movie sets you know riding motorcycles he's always dirty and motorcycle boots and stuff and and that movie the great escape when he get goes over the wire i don't know if you're familiar with that you, you should yeah that's it's a big motorcycle scene but it i think it has to do though with uh mentoring and i've done a lot of things over the years with uh men's work with robert bly and james hillman and uh, the whole men's movement and it kind of went didn't go down in flames, but it dissipated. Yeah. But uh, so I'm excited to to learn more about, uh, you know, about your men's work uh, in the future. But let's keep going here. Um, so, what do you do? I mean, you, know, you do a lot of things, but how do you? How yeah. would you describe what you do? Um, I started off by doing a lot of individual sessions online, and as a therapist, and this is about a decade ago, you weren't supposed to see people. On the internet, internet was kind of fairly new. People had dial up, and so I thought it was just actually an amazing tool to to reach people around the world. Uh, so I called myself a life coach because, as a therapist, you're only supposed to see people in your state. Um, so I started to work in a different way that was honest to me. So I started to see people online. I um, brought people into uh, CrossFit boxes, worked out with my clients. I walked with them around lakes. Um, I kind of took this approach of humanizing myself and coming with you instead of at you. And, Say that again? Uh, coming with you instead of at you. Okay. So um, that kind of changed the temperature. And then, like, I, I somehow kind of indirectly became the anti-therapist, you know? <laughs> and and um, so now I, I, uh, I recently got a, a book deal. Um, and I'm now writing books, doing content, uh, do some speaking stuff. And so I'm not doing a lot of individual sessions anymore. Um, I'm more creating a dialogue and, uh, of course, you know, spreading it across social media. I write every single day. Um, 
even though it's uh, sometimes like uh, uh, feels like Chinese wire torture. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, um, you know, and I have my own podcast and all that. So um, just spreading the message, you know, challenging and, people. And so I know you talk about it, but but why do you do it? Do you have, is there a big why or some motivation? Yeah, like I feel like it lines up with my story and I feel like it's my purpose. Um, I was an ex-screenwriter who um, was chasing a lot of shiny things and had no purpose in life. Uh, this was when I was married. And after I went through my rebirth, um, I was sitting with my own therapist and you know, he's like, what do you want to do with your life if you, don't, if you can't make movies? And, and uh, I was like, I want to do what you're doing. If I can't move people by the masses, I'll do one at a time. Um, and from then on, it's always been about uh, helping other people or creating uh, some kind of dialogue or, or content. Um, and it just feels honest to me. Uh, I feel like this is where I'm meant to go. You know, and then I feel like also now creating a team and, and with our coaching business, um, I feel like I have a responsibility uh, to go out there as far as I can uh, because I have to also uh, set an example for the, the, the people that I teach and coach, et cetera, you know? Cool. Um, now here's a question I heard uh, someone else ask in a podcast, and I've been kind of working it into my kind of interviews. Mm -hmm. If you were a superhero, what would your origin story be? You know, mm. What give you superpowers or your catalyst? Or For me, it's going to be the um, broken heart. You know how superheroes, they have their story and um, whatever it was that was kind of, they saw as their defect or weakness ends up being their superpower kind of thing. Uh, for me, it's, it's going to be love, man. I write a lot about love and relationships. And I think my heart needed to be shattered, right, um, for me to go from Clark Kent to Superman. Uh, so when I was uh, uh, married and chasing shiny things, I felt like Clark Kent pushing the mail cart. It wasn't until I got a divorce, my heart was shattered, I had nothing, and then I had to kind of reinvent myself. I feel like I found my cape. Um, and so uh, because I went through that, now I have some capacity to actually talk about love and inspired relationships and how that affects people, you know? So I definitely think that what we've been through can become um, our gift to uh, impact the world in some way. You know, what's that metaphor? That coal has all these thousands of years of impact and pressure and then a diamond can come out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think obviously it takes pressure for, <laughs> for diamond, you know, it takes the grind. It's also like pearls where um, it takes a, a lot of grinding and grinding for them to come out shiny and beautiful. I think it's the same with humans and our stories, you know? Hmm. And uh, so one of the things we're doing with, uh, you know, so Better Listen is our label where we've done audio recordings over the years. We recorded Joseph Campbell, uh, you know, out of college. I recorded him and uh, a lot of... Uh, all kinds of you know thought leaders and uh, so we've been doing that we publish and distribute audios and now we started this thing called wisdom feed and so the idea behind wisdom feed is to kind of take these timeless messages or kind of deep truths and bring them down to street level because mm -hmm. I'm finding that uh, there's a lot of people and it's what I actually find refreshing of uh, what I know about your work is that, you know, meditation teachers go to a meditation center and teach meditation. That's great. But those people are already into meditation. Right. What, what about the guys back in Brooklyn or yeah. the people that are not oriented to this? And I think that that, so what we're trying to do, hoping to do is to take these um, deep truths timeless truths, whatever cliche you want to use, and take them down to street level. You know, take them down to what the average person on the street can. Um, yeah, maybe. I think that uh, it lines up exactly with what I do. It's like, I feel like I've uh, kind of, um, the universe has packaged me as the Trojan horse in that um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I can relate to uh, the guys who are lifting weights and, you know, um, the locker room. But also, once I get in there, I can also have a conversation about love and vulnerability. Um, I could ride motorcycles, you know, with the best of them and hang out and go on adventures, but also around the campfire 
talk about uh, spirituality and bigger things and, you know, trauma and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, and it's not that I'm, I'm doing, that wasn't a master plan. It just lines up again with uh, uh, what I've been through and, and how I feel the universe has positioned me. But, you know, the other thing is I, I've never been like a straight A student. I've always been a C student. And the thing about psychology is when you go to therapy school, those theories are very dense. And I knew that in order for me to help other people, I had to simplify, as you say, um, bring it to street level. For me, it's putting in a shot glass. I had to, to, to simplify things in order to uh, find any kind of um, value in coaching people or else I would just be a walking textbook. And that's not, that's not who I am. I'm not wired that way. Uh, this is what I love about Bruce Lee is, you know, his philosophies, just really simplifying things like, um, like, you like water, you know. What's that? So what are some of his quotes or ideas? Uh, one of my favorite is, is one of the most famous ones is be like water. <laughs> be like water. Okay. What yeah, does that mean? It's, like, it's super simple, but it's also can be very complicated. Um, but I thought he had um, a great way of bringing things to street, street level. Absolutely. So I have a question. Um, do you find there's theme? Because if you're sitting with someone on the, in the bus or at a dinner party that you don't know, and it's not a dinner party for people at a workshop, it's just like, you know, people you, you run into, you know, some people you kind of get a sense that they have no idea of any of this kind of self-help or self-improvement approach to looking at life. Uh, and then there's people who have that same no idea, but you could see there's a, a window open. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't speak the language, but they're interested. They're curious. Like with me, with my, not, so, not a lot of my friends, but some of my friends, uh, you know, they're getting older. And I think when it comes to people's help, you know, people start to look outside the box. Yeah. When you, when you see people um, taking a medication that's not helping and you say, well, vitamin E can do that and there's no side effects or meditation, you know, mindfulness meditation can do that and there's no side effects. And then I have my standard things that I just kind of naturally developed to, because I feel obligated to share, like I have a, I never got a master's. I mean, I, if I could do it again, maybe I would have, but I feel like I've gotten a master's in life recording all these people. So I just feel compelled to try to, not to force feed to anyone, but to share things. So do you find when you're starting a conversation that there's certain themes or questions or ideas you present to people to kind of nurture that, nurture that interest? Sure, absolutely. And I think that, uh, especially today with wellness and self betterment becoming you know a bumper sticker and, and, and the cool thing and commercialized uh, it's very easy to kind of wear the t-shirt but not practice what you preach so definitely it comes down to when I'm writing every day uh, it has to stem from my truth and my story and if it doesn't ring true to me um, even though I believe in it like for example like meditation you know I'm not gonna sit here and tell people that I'm a big meditator because the truth is I'm not I meditate on my motorcycle and I'm you know meditation is really difficult for me um, but I know the value in that, so I wouldn't preach it unless I'm doing it, if I, unless there's a spin to it that's honest to me, if that makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so, yeah, as long as it's something that um, I, I practice and that I believe in at my core, um, I don't usually try to uh, push messages out, you know? I think it's great that you have become a catalyst by um, interviewing so many people and colliding with, you know, these uh, thought leaders, and then now you... Uh, carrying the microphone, uh, the megaphone, and that's a very natural progression. So I think that's great. Right. Thank you. And it's it's kind of interesting. I feel like I've taken the headphones off and I've literally put the microphone on. Yeah. And, uh, and that's like that's like your cape. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, what is? That's like your cape. Like that's like the whole when we're talking about from Clark Kent to Superman. You know, you taking off your headphones and turning it into now a mic or a, or a megaphone is very empowering. It's your, you know, the, the, the super, if you were a superhero, that kind of thing. No, I get it. So I started, uh, you know, not last year, but the year before I had a new year's resolution, which I generally suck at keeping, but, uh, but it was to be more authentic. And, yeah. uh, and 
uh, I find that refreshing. Like I, I see you do your videos online and you know, a lot of them are just randomized or there's one seed of a thought that you build on and you kind of, it, what's kind of cool about it is a, you're authentic. It's like you could tell you're passionate and clear thinking about it. Even if you're, even though you're kind of making it up as you go along, it just rings true that that it has a message in itself. Uh, you're kind of uh, living by example of going for it kind of thing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I think especially today with social media, uh, people are, are really quick. They're able to smell something that doesn't ring true. And so um, I think the world has become teenagers in that way because no one can smell bullshit faster than teenagers, right? I used to work with teenagers. And so when you put yourself out there, um, and you, you come from a false place, uh, people are going to smell it very fast. And so I think being what I call your solid self or being authentic is, it's just, there's no other way to do it, you know? Right, right, right. I know about teenagers. I have a 15 year old and a 13 year old. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And, and it's, and their BS meter is. Very, very good, very sharp. It, it's digital. It's not like the meter goes off, it beep, it goes, it's like yeah. in a second and, it, and yeah. it rings true or it falls like a thud. Right, and that's how the world is, I think, with, uh, you know, online today. Exactly, exactly. Okay. That being said, it's also hard to do, and I, you know, I am also not authentic 100% of the time. I have insecurities. I care what people think, all of that stuff. But I think, generally speaking, your intention uh, should definitely be to show yourself and, and you know, come, show up in your truest form. Okay, so I think that was, uh, let's see. Um, I think we went through you know, our basic questions. We got through it pretty quick. So are there any takeaways or uh, nuggets of inspiration or anything that comes to mind you'd want to yeah. share to finish up? I have, um, I have so many because I write so much and I've got, I'm on my little vintage typewriter posting uh, stuff on Instagram. But I would say uh, two, two takeaways real quick. One would be um, to never exchange your truth for membership. Um, and I could, I relate to that because I used to exchange who I was to be a part of something. So back in the day when I was in the club business, um, a lot of that also growing up in LA and Hollywood, I think when you exchange your truth for validation and approval, you start to live a, a lukewarm life and right. And we're just talking about being authentic. You go the other way. Uh, so you definitely don't find your cape. You're going to be pushing the mail card. You're not going to find your superpower if you're constantly exchanging your truth to be a part of someone's idea or someone. So that's number one. And number two, I always tell people to trust their story. I think we as a world are so busy ripping out chapters because uh, we've all been through shit and it's lined with shame and guilt. For example, me going through a divorce. Um, it's your story and I think it's the most powerful thing you will ever own. So to trust it and embrace it, your story becomes bigger than you. There's a tipping point when you not only trust and embrace it, but you start to share it. Uh, when you start to share your story, then it's no longer even about you anymore. And I think that is when you're um, hitting potential, you know, when you become a true uh, prism, like light going through you and this rainbow coming out the other side. Wow, that's, that's fascinating. I could stop there, but I have a question. So when you talk about your story, what do you say, getting past it or... Well, most people want to rip out chapters, they deny their story. Um, but your story becomes more powerful when it tips and it becomes bigger than you. And the way that you make your story bigger than you is to not only accept it and embrace it, but you start to share it. Um, at the end of the day, we as humans, we are storytellers. That's how we learn, right? Back from the caveman days when we're drawing uh, animals on the, on the, in the caves, uh, none of that has changed. I mean, just because the internet, the technology, it's, just, uh, it's only advancing all of that. Um, so we must take all the shit that we say that's happened to us and um, embrace it, accept it. It's who we are, uh, learn from it, and then share that with other people because then other people will be able to relate to your story and that process becomes empowering. Well, wow, I get that. And now I'm just, I don't think you said this, but I think if you talk about, oh, the same story. I know I've had a lot of my life, my story but a story can be, can be an anchor that keeps you down. But if you don't, if you don't just look at the good chapters, is, I think is what you're saying, it can become empowering and that makes you, that's your superpower is your story. No one else has your story. Yeah, no one else has seen the world the way that you've seen it, you know? 
But at the same time, we as, as humans, we've all kind of generally been through the same things as far as heartbreak, rejection, pain, trauma, all of those, you know, those are common. But the way that we, that you have individually experienced is, is, is unlike any other. And so there's value in that. Excellent, excellent. Okay, any uh, final words or thoughts? No, or? just um, thank you and uh, keep doing what you're doing. I'm excited to uh, continue to uh, create a dialogue with you. And, um, and uh, yeah, thanks to anyone who's watching this. All right, I think that was great. And thanks so much for kind of introducing yourself to me and also to whoever ends up watching this. Awesome. So have a good one and we'll speak to you soon, John. All right, thank you, Steve. Be well. Thanks. Have a great one.